What's good, YouTube? It's Mary. What's going to be back in another squid video? I got a new list of cards that I think you guys should pick up for this upcoming new year because there are a lot of new products coming out. And now that we finally have a direction after the ban list was released generously by Konami earlier, these are the cards that I think are good pickups in time for the new sets that are coming out. Starting at the top, we have none other than Snake Eye Ash. Yep, this card is apparently only a dollar or two for the super rare, but it happens to be a starter for the entire Snake Eyes engine, and decks like Fire King actually play three copies of this card in particular. It's just a way better starter than their built-in engine cards like Ponyx because of the fact that, number one, you can search Ponyx because it searches for any level one fire monster when he's summoned, but better yet, you can actually search a new Snake Eyes card coming out in Phantom Nightmare, which is absolutely busted, called Snake Eyes Populous. This card says when it's added to your hand, except by drawing it, you can reveal it to special summon it, and then when he's special summon, you can actually add a Snake Eyes Spar Trap from your deck to your hand, meaning you can now add the original Snake Eyes without having to send a card like you do for Witch. And on top of that, what you can actually do is link this off in a Link Rebo, and then when you leave the field with this card, it actually has an effect in Graveyard that says you can place it into your Spar Trap Zone as a continuous spell card, meaning that when you link it off, you bring it back in your spell trap zone, and then instantly you have something to send for the original Sinful Spoil Snake Eye for free. So you get a free Itali for any level one fire monster. In our case, if we're playing Fire Kings, we just go directly for the legendary Fire King Ponyx, and we're off to the races, right? So this card especially is very, very powerful, Snake Eye Ash. You want to play three copies in any given Snake Eye deck, and I feel like it's really, really cheap right now. People are going to kind of forget about it, and then maybe it's going to be the supply and demand, and people are going to pick these all up, and the market's going to dry up. The thing is, Fire Kings, I think, are very, very close to being tier zero. They're as tier one as a deck can get because of the fact that every other deck essentially is not powerful enough to compete with them like i know we have rescue age but they're still watered down because they only have one airlifter whereas fire king still has everything and then on top of that snake eye ash actually has another effect that's very crucial in snake eye decks that allows you to send itself plus any other card that you have to the graveyard to then special summon out the Flamberg Dragon. Snake Eyes Flamberg Dragon, this has an awesome effect when sent to the graveyard to resurrect two level one bodies from your graveyard. So it's effectively using Snake Eye Ash to get three bodies for the cost of two. You get a free plus one, and then he has a generically good effect as well. So I think this is definitely a card that's going to be in demand for the upcoming metagame. And I think you guys should pick up a Kaplay set right now if you don't have it already. Next is a trap card. Ghost Meets Girl, a masterful Makayashi Shirinui Saga. That's a mouthful, but this card says Tribute of Makayashi or a Shirinui Synchro Link Monster. Neither player can synchro summon monsters in the hand deck or extra deck for the rest of the turn. So why is this relevant? Well, we're actually getting a card called Transaction Rollback that's very crucial for trap decks like Labyrinth in the upcoming Maze of Millennia set that comes out in January. And this card says you can pay half your life points and banish this from the graveyard, then target a normal trap card in your graveyard. This effect becomes that normal normal trap cards effect when that card is activated and it actually has a ruling where you do not have to pay the costs for trap cards including this card here ghost meets girl which says you have to tribute a meyakashi or a shirinoi as a cost but because we're bypassing the cost by targeting the card in the graveyard with the effect of transaction rollback we can immediately apply the effect meaning that neither player is going to be able to special summon for the rest of the turn meaning that you lock out your opponent effectively as long as you're able to get this in the graveyard in tandem with the transaction rollback this card only has one printing at an ultra rare it's about a quarter right now, 25 cents. So I think this card, if people start hyping it, you know, this could be something that dries up on the market. I'm not saying it's very good competitively. I'm not really sure of a way you can easily dump this from your deck besides obviously searching it with like the Lady Labyrinth, but you know, it's a little clunky that way. But I don't know, maybe people will actually experiment with this card. So if you guys don't have this right now and you're planning to play Trap Deck, then this is a good time to pick it up. Really quickly, if you guys aren't already subscribed to the channel, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button at the bottom. It'll go a long way to support the channel. Other than that, thanks a lot for tuning in. Next is a spell card, Soul Release. This card printed nearly 20 years ago in Metal Raiders that says target up to five cards in any graveyards, banish them. This card is exceptionally good against Fire King. For those of you guys that don't know what the new Fire King deck does, not the current iteration. This is a very watered down iteration we have right now. But once they get Populous, they literally load up their graveyard with a bunch of crucial monsters, including Sacred Fire King Garunix, as well as a new fire support, Promethean Princess Bestower of Flames, which is a cracked card of epic proportions, a generic Link 3 that allows you to resurrect any fire monster from your graveyard, but better yet, during the opponent's turn, when your opponent special summons a monster, you can target that monster and a fire monster you control 
special summon this card from your graveyard and then pop both monsters. So this card is absolutely crazy. And generally their whole setup is having Promethean Princess in the graveyard as well as Garunix with something like an Amblo Whale on the field, meaning that they're able to trigger the Princess to pop the Amblo Whale. Amblo Whale's effect will trigger, Garunix's effect will trigger. You bring something back in your graveyard with Amblo Whale and then later on it's just there to pop a cards when your cards are destroyed as well. Well, so release essentially bypasses that by banishing the princess, banishing the target for the Amblo Will to resurrect, and banishing Garunix, which is really, really crazy. And if a lot of Fire King players are going to be only playing one copy of Garunix, which I think will be a common trend because this card is not very good to draw, then that means they're just locked out of Garunix for the rest of the turn. So this card is absolutely amazing. And then on top of all that, it can actually search off of the Triple Tactics Thrust because this is a normal spell card. So baiting out any monster effect, or if they happen to use something like a Ponox during the standby phase to add back to the hand, then instantly you can go main phase, thrust for the soul release and then banish the graveyard so you can start playing and it's a lot more uh, of a chance to win you know when they lose their graveyard because fire kings are very very reliant on that graveyard setup that they have after turn one this card in super rare is only about seven or eight dollars right now so this is a good pickup if you guys want to get the super rare copy i think before the hype catches on then now's the time to get it Next is a Pendulum card, Magic Spectre Raccoon Bambuku. We're actually getting some Magic Spectre support in Phantom Nightmare. Now, I'm not saying they're absolutely amazing or might be meta relevant, but from what I've seen, they're decently good. And, you know, generally players like to hype new things. Now, Pendulums have not been around for a long time, so this might be the resurgence of Pendulums for potentially with people experimenting with it. And the minute that someone actually tries out these cards, it means that, you know, you're opening up the market to literally having Bambukus as the only card that could be picked up off the old Magic Spectres, because I don't think any of the old ones are very, very good. You'd probably play one or two, but Bambuku is like the whole engine. You actually get to search any name from your deck, so this is obviously a three of, and there seems to be no reprint in sight. This only has the two printings originally in the Order of Chaos, I think, as an ultra rare, as well as the Megatons for that year. So they're about $5 right now. I know they eventually, they like, trickled up in price back when they were first announced but now they're kind of aspiring down as cards eventually tend to do so i mean five bucks for this five to seven dollars is pretty good if you guys want to play pendulums then definitely pick this guy up Next is a hand trap that I think will be really, really handy, and that's Retaliating C. This says when your opponent activates a spell card that includes an effect which special summons a monster, quick effect, you special summon this from your hand, and it becomes a macro cosmos while it's sitting up face up on the field, special summon out of its own effect. This is especially relevant because a lot of fire decks will be playing the Snake Eye stuff, especially with Populous being released, meaning original Sinful Spoils will be a crucial choke point for you to activate Retaliating C, slam a Macro Cosmos on the table, and then decks like Fire King are just starting to struggle because they have to get rid of that Retaliating C, which might be harder said than done if they don't have access to the graveyard, right? Now, I'm not sure how good Retaliating C is, honestly, as a card because I haven't tested it, but a lot of OCG players have already picked up on it. And having that critical choke point where you can just establish a Macro Cosmos off of the original Sinful Spoils, if they're unprepared for it, can really hurt. Also, decks like Rescue Ace are not going to be able to get the effect of Preventer or potentially even banish cards for Turbulence if they don't get rid of the Retaliating C. So if they're not playing around this card, it could be very, very high impact. I definitely want to test this out, and I think Super Airs are like a dollar each, same with Ultra Airs, so why not, right? If you guys don't have this card, it's always ebbs and flows out of the metagame when there are powerful fusion strategies or just happen to be uh, cards that special summon with spells and again hitting other cards in the crossfire like branded fusion potentially if there's that one branded fusion player at your locals you could just chain it and just blow them out so that's just another thing to think about then the last card I want to talk to you guys about is kind of a meme-worthy card, but it's actually Earthbound Greater Linewalker. The ultra rare printing is like a quarter right now. Earthbounds are actually getting a lot of new support in the upcoming Maze of Millennia pack. Now, I don't know if these guys are actually going to be competitively viable, but the fact is they're getting a lot of new cards. I think like around 12 new cards in Maze of Millennia. It's basically like a huge chunk of the pack is for them. They're getting a bunch of new synchro monsters as well as fusion monsters. So I think, you know what? You could like at least dedicate a quarter or a 75 cents to a playset of the Earthbound Greater Linewalker and then just you know pack your engines in case you decide to play this deck or in case people decide to hype it up and do end up playing it because this card is just somewhat decent and it happens to have that one hollow printing right now so if it's that cheap i was just like you know man might as well right so yeah that's all i had for the uh cards in this video what do you guys think are there any other cards that you should pick up in time for the new year with phantom nightmare and maze of millennia as well as the ycs season restarting or is this everything that we need in time for the uh, ban list as well? Because, yeah, there are a lot of new market shifts with the ban list. But, yeah, I want to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments below. Let us know. Other than that, we'll see you all next video. Thanks for tuning in and subscribing. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.